Hello, hi, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to learn how to do mobile authentication using Jetpack Compose and Firebase. So let's get straight into it. The first thing that we need to do is to create a very fresh project, new project in Android Studio as well as in Firebase. So as you can see, I have created a new project and I've named it as phone book. We can use this project for different for learning different aspects of Jetpack Compose in the upcoming videos. So the first thing that we're going to learn is to how to do the phone authentication. So once you have created the project in Android Studio, we have to create a project in Firebase as well. I hope everyone knows how to create a project in Firebase. So I'm not going into it right now. You can find a lot of videos on how to create a Firebase project. There are a lot of blogs and videos on the internet. So once you have done that, there are a few things that needs to be done at the Firebase end. Let me show demonstrate to you how what needs to be done. So once you have created a new project, as you can see, this is the project that I have created called phone book on Firebase. And I have also integrated it with my Android Studio project. So you can just simply click on add app, choose the Android project you want and follow these steps to integrate it with your Android project. So once you have done that, you will see your Android package name over here and then we can follow the next steps. There is actually few things, the few steps that needs to be done for this as they have, I think in the recent times they have increased. I would say some safety concerns regarding the phone authentication. So they have added few steps in between. So we will go through all these steps together. So once you have added your Android project, the next thing that needs to be done is to enable the sign in method that is phone. So if you have just created the project, you won't be getting this as the option. What you will be getting is something like this. Just select phone and enable it like this. Also, one more thing that we can do here is that we can add a test number so that we don't actually use the, the, the Firebase service or the Firebase quota for sending out SMSs. So what I mean by that is once you enable this, simply click on this option phone numbers for testing and you can add a dummy number over here along with the verification code. So what would happen here is if we enter this as the number, Firebase would treat, it, treat this number as the testing number and by simply passing this as the OTP value, it will verify it. And for all the other numbers, it will actually send the SMSs. So what we are going to do here is we are going to test with this number. We are going to add this number as the phone number and this as the verification code and check if we are able to log in successfully. That is what is the scope of this particular project is. So once you have added this number and this OTP, simply save it and you will find this as enabled. Okay. Once you have done this, we have right now what we have done so far is we have integrated the Firebase project with Android Studio and we have enabled the sign-in provider as phone and added a test number along with the OTP. Okay. The next steps is to follow this particular article or blog, which says how we can authenticate the Firebase on Android using a phone number. So if you scroll down, you can see we have to add this as a dependency, which I have already added like this. I've added both the dependencies. The first one is the Firebase core dependency. The second is the authentication dependency. Okay. So these are the two dependencies that is required for Firebase and for authentication. Okay. So once we have done that, the next step, if you scroll down is to enable the sign in method, which I've already done. And this is the step which I was talking about that if I remember correctly, which wasn't there before. Okay. The safety net and recapture verification was not there before. 
they have added it i'm not sure when but i think they have added in the past year or so so as you can read this uh, it says that for the google services uh, policies and concerns and so and so and so and so forth we need to uh, enable the android device check api for our project in the google cloud console so if you click on this link it will open up google cloud and you can just simply enable this i have already enabled this so that is why it is marked as enabled but you can just simply enable this okay so once you have done that this would be done and there is one more thing that needs to be done or i i, I would say there are two two more things so the, the second thing is that we need to add the sha 2256 fi fingerprint to our firebase project so these are the two signatures sha 256 as well as sha 1 so since we are following these steps for safety net we need to add the sha 256 fingerprint and for recapture verification we need to add sha 1 and before we add this let's me let me go through what is recapture verification so as you can see it says that in case safety net cannot be used for example let's say if you are using emulator or something where we can't use the safety net option then recapture is used so recapture is basically the service which provides you with the captcha functionality for example what would happen here is that once we enter the name i mean sorry uh, once we enter the phone number and the otp it will redirect you to a captcha screen where you have to select or answer some questions like choose the uh, image of cars among the images listed below or something like that and you have to choose that and for doing that we need to enable this or we need to provide the sh1 signature to the project okay so let's do that let me show you how you can find the sh256 fingerprint and sh1 fingerprint it's pretty simple go back to your project click on gradle under the task open android and click on double click on signing report once you click on signing report it will provide you with the sh1 and sh256 for your project Simply just click on Gradle, task Android, double click on signature report. It will run some tasks and in the bottom terminal, you will find SHA1 and SHA256. So just copy each of them one, one by one. And what you need to do is you need to add it to your project. So for adding it, go to settings, project settings, scroll down and you need to add it over here add fingerprint and add the respective sha1 and sha256 okay we can jump into the code that is the uh, the basic integration basic uh, setup that needs to be done for this particular service now uh, let's go back to the android studio and let's see what what i have done so far and what needs to be done to integrate all these things or to make it work so what I have done here is I have used a dialog. I was testing out how to work with a dialog in Jetpack Compose. I'm also pretty new to this. So I was testing out the various uh, UI components that that is there. So, yeah. so for this, what I have done is I have created a dialog where you enter the number, click on send OTP. And once the OTP is sent, it will pop up a different or ask you to enter the OTP and then you can simply click on verify and it will verify it and how would we know that it is verified and it is working fine is that in the log cat we will see the console for this i have added the the logs for this if it is successfully authenticated it will log it in the log cat so for in the login dialog i have this is, is basically a composable where i have added a dialog which has these properties on dismiss request content and properties so dialog state is maintained using a mutable state and for content i am calling a complete dialog content which is also a composable which is taking care which is taking care of all these things inside the dialog you can see login with phone number is basically a text this is an input then this is a button okay and before diving into this composable as you can see i have declared few things 
that is uh, the auth object that needs to be that is required for the authentication is declared over here as you can see the auth object that is required for the authentication is declared over here along with the store verification id which is set to it as the empty string and we are going to use a lot of states for the ui and few uh, functionalities callbacks for making the otp making the auth work inside the complete dialog content i have declared uh, again few states for the ui components as you can see these are all taking care of for the, as you can see these are all declared for the use of the ui states and this is the actual code for the ui where i'm creating a card adding some modifiers to it like shape size and height inside the card there is a column where i have declared the title that is login with phone number as you can see with some font weight and font size and then there is this is the text field which is having these properties single line some modifier on value change where i'm checking if the length is less than or equal to 10 value as the state's value and placeholder as enter your phone number enter phone number and as you can see there are some conditional ui composables where if i am checking if the otp is visible or not if it is visible then i am showing the text field for adding the otp if it is not i'm just simply showing the button to send the otp okay and there is also one more button where which is which will be visible once we have entered the OTP for verification. Okay, so there are basically two buttons, one for sending the OTP, one for verifying the OTP. And these two are under wrapped under a condition which states that once the OTP text input or text field is visible, only then it will be shown or it will, no, it will not be shown. So once we have done with the UI components, which was not the focus of this particular project, the main focus was to how to set up the phone authentication using firebase so as you can see uh, there is a button called send otp so once this button is clicked there are a few things that needs to be done so uh, let's go to the code and check what we have to follow is once we click on send otp it will trigger this function called on login click which will pass or which will take in the context and the phone number entered so if we click on on login clicked you can see this function is getting called which is setting up the language code as English and this is the object callback object that is getting created of type phone auth provider on verification state change callback which is having three functions inside it on verification completed on verification failed and on code sent so on code sent will be triggered once the OTP has been sent from the server and once that is done we will update the source verification we will update the store verification ID with the verification ID that we have received and call the on code send callback function. Regarding this particular function, this will be triggered once the if the OTP is auto verified or if the phone number is authenticated instantly. Okay, in that case, this particular function will be called. And then for the other case where we have to manually add the code we have to follow few more steps okay so once we have written this we need to create another object called options which is basically created using the phone auth options where we are providing this the phone number this the timeout value and the callback which we have just created at the top so for now i have added the the uh, isd code for my country you can make this as dynamic as you want and once that is done, we will finally call the on verify phone number passing the options as the parameter. Okay. So let's say uh, we have provided the number, we have clicked on send OTP, we have received the OTP. So now what will happen is we will call the on code send callback function. So you can see what will this do is this will in turn call this and update the is OTP visible state to true now once this is true there will be another text field that is that will be visible for entering the otp and 
this button will be replaced by another button called or which is will be used for verifying and once you have entered the verification code and clicked on verify what it will do is it will call the verify phone number with code function which will take the context the store verification id which we have updated on receiving the code as well as the otp that we have entered and in this particular function we are creating a credential by passing the verification id and the code to this particular function and finally calling sign in with phone auth credential function which in turn will check if we are which we have which in turn will check if we have successfully authenticated the user or not if we have successfully authenticated the user it will log it as logged in otherwise as wrong otp i have just logged it for now but what you can do here is once the user has been logged in successfully you can navigate it to a different screen so let's check how each of these things are working and that will give you a better idea okay so the first things first if you remember i have added the testing number in the firebase which was 10 times 1 so i will simply enter 1 and click on send otp okay so before doing that let me show you what will be triggered when so if i as soon as i click on send otp this will be triggered okay which in turn will open up the recapture or the captcha screen for me it might not ask me to select the fields because i have recently done it many times but for you it might add you to choose the pictures from a given set of pictures or something like that okay so let's test it out if i click on send otp you can see it redirects me to a different screen uh, it says verifying you are not a robot and see it didn't ask me for captcha because as i said it uh, we, i have done it many times so now what happened here is the code has been sent and we have updated the value and called the callback function which in turn has updated the is otp visible object which removed the text field or i would say pardon me which ha which has added the text field for entering the otp as well as the button to verify so for the otp if you remember have already given a test otp in the firebase console as one two three four five six and now what will happen here is once we click on verify it will go to this particular function and it will check if the otp that i have entered is is correct or not and if the verification which was done earlier is authenticated correctly or not if i click on let me first of all open lockcat also let me clear all these values and let us check if we are getting this as the value or not so if i click on verify you can see it gave me as logged in which basically means that i have successfully authenticated the user on firebase the first verify number was to verify the number only and now what we have done here is we have actually created a user in firebase to make sure that we have done it correctly let me show refresh this screen and we can see i have added the number and it is today's date and we have successfully added a user in the firebase using the phone authentication so that's pretty much it for this particular video hope you got to learn how to integrate this functionality you can make it better by actually structuring the code i have just created this one single file for giving you a demonstration apart from this there is also an extension that i have created for getting the activity context i will provide the entire code in the github repository in my github repository in the description below feel free to go through it use it and let me know if you have any feedback regarding this or any other topics that you want me to cover in the upcoming videos so thank you thank you for watching this video hope you got to learn something new today we'll see you in the next one bye